Hey everybody, Pastor Jason and Pastor Jody yep. here with Amen. you on this Life Change Daily Devotional. We got you on here for the first day. I told you the first day you were here. Ah, you did. <laughs> I told you. We get you up here. Yes, sir. And we got him up here. I'm happy to be here. Hey, listen, we are ecstatic you were here. And what a blessing he has been uh, so far to this, this ministry. Only going to increase. And you are about to be blessed this week because we are going to continue the teaching series that we've been doing here called Clear Vision. This is something that the Lord put to our heart a few weeks ago, and we've been we've been talking about it. We've been we've been studying it throughout the Word, and and so just to give you a little bit of a uh, just a little bit of a, a a backstory, a little bit of a summary of where we've been. We've been talking, uh, beginning talking about it, saying two things that have plagued the Church of the Living God is having no vision, or having hindered or obscured vision, right. a lack of clear vision. And so we've been going through each one of those things, talking about how important it is to have vision in every area of your life. Obviously, you are here as our worship pastor, but you're here today to bring us a perspective on worship that probably none of us have. Because for us, we're all involved in worship. But the truth is, is that during worship, you have a perspective that that none of us get to see yeah. because you are standing up, you're leading worship. We're down in the crowd. We're, we're worshiping with you. So we don't get to see the things that you get to see. And I was I was thinking about this as, as we were preparing, me and you preparing to come here. And I began to think about this story out of Luke 19. We talked yeah. a little bit about it off the camera. Yeah. But I want you to, if you want to, if you can get your Bibles, if you're able to, or you could just listen to me read right here. And it is uh, Luke chapter 19. I'm going to begin reading in verse one. It said, Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. A man was there named Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector and he was rich. He tried to see who Jesus was, but was not able from the crowd because he was little, little in stature. So he ran ahead and he climbed up in a sycamore tree to see him, for he, Jesus, was to pass that way. When Jesus came to the vicinity, he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for today I must remain at your house. So he hurried and came down and received him joyfully. So, oh, wow. so the whole setup of this thing, it's it's very important to get a little bit of backstory in here. Yeah. So Zacchaeus was a man, most likely a Jewish man, who was working for the oppressing Roman government. And his job was to collect the taxes from people. Right. Now, there wasn't a clear code. And, and even at that, uh, obviously, we, we already d dislike the people who collect our taxes, <laughs> right. yeah. even if they do it in a fair manner. Yeah. But the deal was is that these guys weren't doing it in a fair manner. They were arbitrarily setting up, this is how much taxes are. Yep. And what they were doing is, is like, for instance, if, if I was a tax collector and I was collecting from you and I was a corrupt tax collector... I, if your taxes were, uh, if your taxes were a hundred dollars, I might come to you and say your taxes are two hundred and fifty dollars. Right. Yeah. So what I'm doing is I'm collecting that hundred dollars from you. I'm sending that to the government that I work for, and I'm keeping a hundred and fifty dollars for myself, and that's how I'm making myself very rich. So not only am I working for the system that is already oppressing you, right. but I myself am oppressing you further. Absolutely. That's why as it rolls through the Gospels, we see over and over again, they're, they're either called ta tax collectors or called publicans. Yeah. And they are, when, when they are listing the worst of society, yeah. they are listing publicans. As a matter of fact, when Jesus decided, let's make a clear distinction between, between, uh, between these stories. We're going to say that a tax collector stood up and a teacher of the law stood up. Right. Those are the two ends of the spectrum we're on. We have a religious leader and we have a thief and a liar who works for the government that is oppressing us. Right. This is who we're talking about. Yeah. Now, I, every time I think about this and I hear his, hear his name, I always think about the song we used to sing in Sunday school. Right. Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus was, was a wee, wee little man, man and a wee little man was Yeah, he. absolutely. <laughs> and there was, <laughs> this is the thing. He was a very, very short guy. He had heard that Jesus was coming. As a matter of fact, it's very, very interesting because in the city of Jericho, there was a constant buzz when Jesus was coming through. It was in Jericho where Jesus healed Bartimaeus. Every time Jesus was coming through Jericho, the word was passing and people wanted to get a glimpse of who Jesus was. So here's Zacchaeus. 
Zacchaeus says, I want to see who Jesus is, but the problem is, is that he was shorter than everybody else. So the crowd was pressing around. Even if Jesus had passed by, he wouldn't be able to see him. So this rich tax collector finds a sycamore tree and he climbs up in this tree so he can see Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Zacchaeus' vision was obscured. Wow. Yeah. His vision was hindered. The reason I was, we're, we're, we're setting this backstory and I'm talking to you today and we're talking about this today is because there is a reason when we come to church, we lead the service off with worship. Yeah, that's right. There is a reason. Yeah. It's not because it's just a customary thing. No. Because the truth is, if it was a customary thing, somebody would have already jumped right out of it. Right. There is a reason that we jump straight in to worship. I believe that we jump into worship for the same reason that Zacchaeus got into the tree. Absolutely. Because when we come in, it is so hard to see Jesus until we can find something that causes us to rise above it. Absolutely. Pastor Jody, talk to us. Tell us what that is in worship that causes us to rise above to see Jesus. You know, Jesus. it's like, it's, it's real simple about praise and worship. You know, there's a difference in praise and worship. And mm -hmm. I like to say it kind of like this. Praise is the hallway you walk through to get to the room of worship. Mm. And we all begin to praise and, and we can all dance and shout. And that's fun. And, and breakthrough happens in that. Yes. When you begin to worship God. Right then you begin eventually during that worship, begin to have a face-to-face -face oh, with God. And, yeah. and it's almost like looking into a mirror and he begins to reveal to you the things mm -hmm. that need to happen and the things that need to go, yeah. you know, in your life. And so worship is that, and it ele that elevates you. Yes. It takes you just like Zacchaeus. It takes you to another level. And Zacchaeus, I believe he realized, you know what? I can't keep living like I'm living. Right. I've got to get to another level. And mm. he, he, he had all these obstacles. Oh. He had all these obstacles. <laughs> I mean, he was short, and all these people around him hated him. Yes, you know that. yes, they of couldn't course. stand him. And so he's like, "Well, what am I going to do? Am I just going to go home? No, I, I need Jesus." Mm -hmm. And when you begin to worship, he he just said, "You know what? There's a tree right here, and it just so happened that I believe <laughs> that tree was planted the whole time yes. for that one reason. Yes, that I, one, run, I uh, think one it, encounter. I think it's like this, Pastor Jody. I, uh, that 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 God knew." when the seed of that sycamore tree went into the ground, because we don't know how it was planted. You know, it could have been planted on purpose by a person. Yeah. It could have been planted by a bird that was passing by one day. Yeah. We don't know why or where or how it was planted. Yeah. What we know is that it was in the right place right. Yeah. at the right time yeah. for Zacchaeus to get up where he could see Jesus. Yeah, absolutely. Talk to me about, about, or to us, all of us, about the perspective when you look out and you see, because you see every yeah. level of worship, you even pointed this out in our in a couple of Wednesdays ago or, or last Wednesday, you pointed out one of the things that I love about this church is that everywhere you look, you find somebody worshiping. Absolutely. If it's in the sound booth or the media booth or or, or yeah. wherever it is, talk to us about, <clears throat> about not only that great part, but talk to us also about the difficulty that you see when you watch people and they are not climbing the tree that's available to them. Yeah, that worship. I mean, the thing is that people are dealing with everything in their life that they've gone through True. during that week. Yep. And they come into a service, and 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 it's sometimes to them it's easy for Pastor Jody to be up on that stage yep. and try to lead me in worship, <laughs> but he don't know the hell I've gone through all week. Right, right. But I do know this: that if you just begin to worship Him, yes. It, it, the the Lord's gonna pull you out of that. Yes, but you got to you got. It's a sacrifice. You've got to get to that place, you know, and, and worship. But you see it whenever you're up there leading worship. You see the folks that uh, just a couple of weeks ago on the Wednesday night we were leading worship, and I noticed a, a lady out in the audience, and and I could just tell that she was broken, and that mm -hmm. she and but I, I saw I almost she just began to worship, and I just saw all of that, you know, in my spirit just breaking off mm -hmm. of her, and and she went to another mm -hmm. level, and she saw Jesus, yes, and. But you see those, and in, in, in what people don't understand, I, I don't believe sometimes, is that, that your worship, it, it creates an atmosphere. Yes. And, and so if, if, you know, I guess I could walk around, or you could walk around, and you could always just, just kind of hang out in your mess mm -hmm. that you're in. Or mm -hmm. you can say, guess what? I mean, there's life and death in my tongue. Yes. So I'm just going to worship God because, 
Now, it, at the end of it all, I mean, he's the author and the finisher yeah. of our faith. And so he's going to pull us out no right. matter what. And so you see folks going through that. But it, to, for me, it makes me want to lead even more. Yes. And just And lead them into the throne room right. of God. Because right. I know that's where the healing is, the deliverance Come on. is. Come on. That, that's where he meets us at our need mm -hmm. every single time. He's yeah. not, it's not just by chance or maybe he will, maybe he won't. Mm -hmm. He does every time. Right. And and I and worship is just powerful and we do it all the time. It's it's something we do here mm -hmm. at the church all the time. But for some people, it's not a lifestyle. They yeah. didn't grow up, you know, in praise and worship, and so they have to be led. Mm -hmm. But I can't lead them somewhere that I hadn't been myself. And so that's it. If I if uh, if if I'm going to lead them, then the worship time is going to have to be an overflow of something I mm -hmm. do all the time. But I'm wanting them, like Zacchaeus, I'm, I want them to climb that tree mm -hmm. to be able to see Jesus. And so uh, I, you see all, you you really see all types. But what I love it, uh, about here at Abundant Life is that everybody uh, is worshiping. Mm -hmm. And the ones that are not, it's not long before they are because right. they're getting set free. And I think that that's an important thing to, to look at as well, <clears throat> is there was a point where Zacchaeus, even next to that tree, was still at the level he was when he couldn't see Jesus. Yeah. So he's right next to this tree, but he's still in no better shape to see Jesus. Probably, maybe even with that first heave, that first climb, yeah. he's probably still not there. Right. Might even be the second step that he's climbing. He he's still step. not there. He kept going. So what you do is you keep climbing. That's the thing that we'll view a lot of times inside inside worship is that what you're going to receive also depends on the level that you're willing to ascend to Absolutely. in your worship. Absolutely. I think, you know, one of the things that I've noticed in my time, I've been in church all my little life. And one thing I've noticed in, in, inside of that is that, you know, there's a reason a lot of times we sing three, four songs. Yeah. Because that might be the point where somebody's crawling from way down here. And, and it's going to take them to that third or fourth song to work their way up. Pushing, now, yeah. there's some folk that the minute we hit that first lick, they've already been climbing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They've already been at a spot. Yes. So, hey, I'm already the level. Hey, look, from the first bar, from the first verse, I already see Jesus. There he is right yes. there. Yeah, absolutely. But there are some folk that by the time it takes them to get halfway through the last song yeah. before they're at a place like, okay, I can finally see him. That's why we put it right in front of the word. Yeah, yeah. Because what we're doing is we're saying, elevate yourself to a place where you can see Jesus. Absolutely. Because a couple things happen here. And I want to I want to point it out. Take a few minutes. As a matter of fact, it's the last few minutes that we have in here. To take a few minutes. Because Zacchaeus not only got to a place where he could see Jesus. Yeah. Zacchaeus got to a place where Jesus could see him. Yeah, absolutely. This is wow. what worship does for us. Absolutely. It puts us in a place where not only we can we see what God is saying, but God can find us. I've been in so many services and been there so many times where a person has said to me, uh, or I've even said to the pastor, you were preaching to me today. Absolutely. And a lot of people can walk up and say that at the end of the day. Why? Because it looks like Jesus walked by a tree and looked up and said, Jason, I see you. Come on down, me and you are going to spend some time together. Absolutely. Yeah. Pastor Jody, how do we get there? We, it, you, I think what you what you just said was perfect. And I know it's hard and I know it's difficult, but you have to push. You yes. have to press. Yes. You have to climb. You, it, it's, uh, look, I, if, if we had two weeks, I could tell you uh, testimonies in my life where, mm -hmm. where I just had to push and push and God would end up giving me a song out of the whole thing. But if yes. I hadn't... A, kept climbing and just kept mm -hmm. going and kept pushing. So all I could do today is encourage you to keep climbing and mm -hmm. keep worshiping. And you know what? He's going to do the same thing for you that he told uh, Zacchaeus. He's going to go home with you. Yeah. And, yes. that, and that's a whole other thing right there. That's a whole he, different he's gonna deal. He's going to go home with you. Now. Oh, my God. It just so happens. You know, you didn't know this, but I was telling the worship team this the other night about this same story. You really? didn't know this. But when you worship him and your your relationship elevates like him climbing that tree, he, he wants to go home with you. And that means he doesn't want to just be in the living room. Come he on. wants to be in the closet. He wants to be in the he wants to be in every room mm -hmm. of your heart in your life. Yes. 
that's where he wants to that's where he wants to have his being mm -hmm. and then when that happens for sure you're on the right track mm -hmm. and, and he's got you and he's not he's not a god that's mm -hmm. gonna watch you fall he's not gonna he loves you and that's what makes worship so powerful right. and exciting you know i i think we're at a great spot for us to begin to pray because here's what here's the thing what i want to what i want us to do tomorrow uh for me and you it'll be a few minutes for for the rest of you you'll have to sit tight until tomorrow on this one <laughs> But what, for, what I want for us to do tomorrow is I want for us to, to begin to explore that. Let's talk about some of those personal times yeah. where a song, a time of worship, a, an experience of oh, worship yeah. took us to a level that we had never been before because we, we needed to see a perspective of Jesus that we had never seen before. Yeah. For right now, I'd love for you to do this for us. Will you begin to pray for us now, Pastor Jody, that the Lord will begin to let a revelation of what it means to climb and worship, yeah. to see him. Will you do that for yeah, us? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Lord, we thank you, God, yes, for Jesus. this time together. Oh, we thank Rebe you that it's ordained by, by you, Lord. And Lord, there's somebody watching today, Lord, that, that they want to climb that tree. They yes, might not God. know how. Yes, Lord, God. and today I pray that you give them all a yes, revelation, Jesus. Lord, yes, of what worship is, God. Ooh, and that they can understand that all they have to do is just lift their voice, lift their hands, open yes, up their mouth, and just begin to My bless God. the Lord. Yes. And begin to worship you. My God. And Lord, right now, wherever they're at, whatever situation they're dealing with in their life lord you're big enough lord it's not a thing where you're just uh, gonna barely get by but it's a thing lord that you have called them out of that darkness into your marvelous light and i ask you right now lord to teach them to lead them lord in the direction that they want to go lord and they and allow them to understand that Worship is powerful yes, because yes, it's God. all about you. Sure, Lord, we claim that right now, Lord, and we thank you, God, yes, God. for the worship that's going on right now Hallelujah. over this broadcast Hallelujah. with your people, Lord. And we bless you and we thank you today in yes, Jesus' name. God. Yes, God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. As Pastor Hallelujah. Jody was praying, I felt this in my spirit. It was a, a, a thing to release over you today, a prophetic word to release over you today. I felt the Lord say to me, as soon as this devotion is over, take a moment and find a place to worship him. Yes, yes. Just your own personal time, your own personal place. What it's going to do, we're going to be speaking about this in just a few minutes. You're going to hear about it tomorrow, but it's going to put a perspective on you that tomorrow when we open it up, you'll understand. You'll understand in a moment because God is not only choosing to take yes. you to a level when you show back up to church. The, the truth is, is he wants to bring it to your house right now. He wants yes. to bring it to where you are right now. And if you'll begin to worship in just a second, when we fi finish here, yes. begin to worship the Lord. God is going to open up a level for you that you have never yes. experienced to this point. I prophesied over you. Amen. I declare it over you Amen. now in the name of Jesus. Yes. So listen, God bless you. We'll see you right back here tomorrow. Hey, everybody. Pastor Jason here. We want to thank you for joining us for today's devotion. Remember to share it across your social media platforms. If you live in the South Atlanta area or the North Macon and Forsyth areas and you are looking for a great church where the power and the presence of God are on display, we would love to have you visit us at our Revival Center campus in Locust Grove, Georgia, or our Forsyth campus in Forsyth, Georgia. You can find information about these locations at our website, AbundantLifeChurch.com. Remember, it's time to stretch yourself. It's time to dream bigger. It's time to believe for the impossible. It's time to expand.